Hey guys, so I thought for today's little gold recovery experiment we could uh, see what uh, these things are kind of worth. Um, I've come across quite a few slot processors over the years and usually what I do is I just harvest the, uh, the CPUs out of them and process the fingers obviously but I've never actually processed the CPUs by themselves to see what the actual gold value of a uh, slot processor like this is. So um, yeah, let's uh, basically get into them. So first step, as I've, I've pre-prepared these, is grab a screwdriver, get it in there, uh, break the covers open. So these two top ones are Pentium 2s, the bottom one is a Pentium 3. And there we go. And you've got a few little, uh, a few little ICs, probably like um, 1.5 gram a kilo type of uh, yield on those, but that's not really what we're looking for. Uh, when you open up the covers, these have little steel plates kind of holding the processor down on the heat sinks. So you just pop those off with the screwdriver as well. Uh, what we're really looking for, if I can do this on camera, it's usually how it works out. Maybe I'll have more luck with this one. Maybe, there we go. Is, uh, this is the main processor there, and obviously you've got some gold plating and the gold fingers. Um, I'll do a rough estimate on what the gold plating on the fingers is worth, but really what I want to find out today is uh, what, e what each of these CPUs are worth um, in terms of gold. Now, um, these are the ones that you are looking for. They look like that, and if you pop them upside down, they've got the, the kind of black encapsulant on the bottom that covers the bond wires. Uh, some of them look like this, and essentially that is a flip chip. You can see the die is on top of the board, and that is pretty much worthless for gold recovery. So these ones, you get a little bit of uh, aluminium out of them, and you get some nice gold fingers. So, uh, these ones here, obviously, probably the best method is just use an air hammer to, to remove them. You probably could just uh, kind of bend the board like that, and... Get in there like that if you really want to. See, that's a good one. Um, so what I'll do next is I'll just show you how we're going to pre-prepare these and uh, and then we'll get into it. So in total, I've got uh, those two there, which those two, I've got um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I believe in here I've got three more that are already prepared. So that's going to be 17 processors in total. And yeah, hopefully we get a, uh, a number big enough out of this that we can actually see, you know, what the, what the gold value is. Cool, I'm going to go uh, show you how we deal with those. Okay, guys, so start off with those uh, Pentium 2 processors. I've got my old uh, trusty map gas torch get some pliers. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is remove that big uh, that big heat sink. The nice thing with these chips is that the heat sink is actually just soldered on with regular solder. So you'll see they come off very easily. I've got the map gas torch set very low. Give it a little bit of heat. Not quite yet. Almost there. There you go. So easy as that. The heat sink pops off. Now the obvious problem at this point is that we've got a we want the black stuff we have got a ton of uh, tin everywhere on top and we've got a ton of tin everywhere on the bottom so let's get that out of the way for now maybe wipe the worst of the it's nice having reasonable gloves get rid of all that tin that's on the black so the next step uh, essentially is the easiest option is we're just going to chop off with the uh, I think they're aviation shears uh, all of the the tin part of this. It's not so bad leaving a bit of PCB behind, but we just want to get rid of all the the tin solder solder bumps from the bottom. Now, one reason why we would think that these would be pretty good for gold recovery. It's just literally the number of connections they have on the bottom. Every connection is going to be a, uh, a gold bond wire to the die. By the way, that little square in the middle is the die. And um, don't worry too much about that gold that you see on the top. That is just a flash coating to, to help the soldering. Nothing worth there. Uh, what we want is the, are the bond wires. So just give it a chop like that. Oops, there it goes. I've got almost all of the, there we go, 
And now the next step is you can grab a knife. Uh, sometimes you're able to just use um, side cutters, but you essentially just want to grab, you know, the, the top layer at least. So it's as simple as that, and you got rid of uh, all of the tin from this. And what you're basically left with is uh, just the the die and the epoxy that contains the bond wires. So. Okay guys, I've got the, uh, that Pentium 2 uh, die and uh, a little bit of board here and uh, some fairly interesting things. The, the main bit with the die didn't break very well, showing me a lot. You can see a lot of bond wires in there, but we already know there's bond wires, so that's nothing special. Uh, these were the bits that I were looking at throwing away um, rather than process or rather than incinerate and process. And um, at first they don't, you know, you think, oh, that's okay. But if you actually... Uh, start zooming in on these you'll notice that if you look in the right kind of places then a lot of the bond wires um, have actually broken off and are stuck to this side rather than the other side and not so much on this piece this piece looks pretty clean um, I saw it more on the other piece this one here so it's got all these layers in the board and if we just hunt through quickly there you can see um, so that's that's a good example there. I'll just get the I think we're zoomed to the max. There's the focus, and you can see the little bond wires, uh, well, at least part of them, still stuck to the lens there. So I think what I'll basically do is I'll incinerate and um, crush. See, there's a lot of bond wires there. I'll crush these things up as well, and um, basically recover as much of that bond wire as I can. Uh, probably the majority of them will be stuck in the in the black stuff anyway. So if we look at this one, I'm just going to go uh, zoom out a bit. So it's a bit more obvious. Uh, let us look at what should we look at? Let's look at the uh, the inside of the epoxy oh, there-ish. So do that. Get the focus. Go all the way in. Focus. And you'll see, um, you can see pretty clearly the uh, the rows and rows of uh, bond wires that run through the epoxy. So it all looks like it's pretty close to the surface there. Um, so nothing special there. We know we know we want to process the epoxy anyway because that's where the gold is. Um, if we let's crack that one open, can we see anything more? If we look into the side of that one. Oops, a bit hard to get the focus and stuff. No, it doesn't really tell us much. You can, you know, it's a little bit of a little bit of bond wire happening there on the corner, but you know, this is this is not telling us much. But yeah, I think it's pretty clear. We want to get rid of the uh, of the layer with the tin, but uh, I think it's probably worth actually processing uh, all of these things, even though the the lands that are visible are basically just a, a flash coating. Uh, if there are bits of bond wire stuck to them, probably worth processing them anyway. So, yeah, I'd say uh, carry on with this, and um, I'm going to go get the incineration underway. Okay, guys, so I finished the uh, pyrolization, incineration, ball mill to crush things fine, and then a little bit of water washing in this beaker. And um, I have shown that whole process in other videos, so let me know if you can't find that. I'll shoot you a link through but um, pretty standard process for uh, preparation of ICs. Um, doesn't look very exciting in this uh, camera. Let's get it under the microscope and uh, hopefully we'll see at least a few bond wires in there. Okay guys, so here is, are those uh, Pentium 2 ICs under the microscope. Um, so at this point, at this kind of zoom level, we're seeing a hell of a lot of copper uh, not that many. I can see the odd bond wire in there, but not that many. Let's um, go in for a closer look. So this is the we're going to the maximum maximum zoom, and we should be able to look through the surface of the water relatively easily. Um, let's have a bit of a hunt around. So you see those those kind of long coppery strips like that one are the tracks that came off those fiberglass little boards. So there's going to be quite a lot of that kind of stuff in there. Let's see if we can find. Uh, let's see if we can find some bond wire. So the, oops, bugger. Sorry, that there. Can get the focus right. That there is uh, 
gold bond wires and you can see um, relatively long it's it's kind of hard to judge on a microscope but if you straighten those out they would be mini millimeters three or four millimeters probably um, yeah it looks to be uh, quite a lot of that that copper junk that's the uh, that copper track and uh, the, f the big flat bits of copper like that I'm not too worried about they're very thin and so they'll they'll dissolve away relatively quickly um, yeah definitely uh, definitely a few bond wires in there um, it's quite a few over there uh, probably not quite as many as I would have liked to see but um, but that's how it works uh, definitely more copper junk than you get when you're processing uh, the old uh, Northbridge type BGA chips um, but yeah so it looks okay it looks like everything is relatively free there's no there's no large particles in there trapping bond wires so we should be able to uh, we should be able to get to all the bond wires with the acid so let's uh, move along to the um, to the acid process to the fume hood hey guys we've got those uh, Pentium 2 processor remnants uh, sitting in water heated up to about 65 degrees Celsius and now I'm going to use uh, nitric acid to dissolve away the base metals um, creating copious amounts of copper nitrate so probably um, be pretty safe giving it about 10 milliliters or so to start off with I'm guessing there's going to be more than 10 grams of um, copper in there so shouldn't be any problem uh, if we go a tiny bit over with the nitric acid at this stage it doesn't really matter um, because we're going to be washing out the copper nitrate uh, before we progress to aqua regia to dissolve the gold anyway so there we go basically uh, as you guys can see pretty clear reaction happening there I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit more there you go pretty obvious that uh, something is happening there um, at this point no gold should be going into solution there is plenty of copper there for it to cement on even if there were some uh, some chlorides from somewhere uh, some chlorine it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't um, stay in solution so we're pretty safe at this point to uh, just put this um, copper nitrate that's formed straight into the waste disposal process okay I'm gonna carry on with this just add keep on adding nitric acid uh, every few minutes when when the when the reaction stops until all the uh, visible copper is pretty much gone and until the reaction stops and uh, then we'll go from there okay guys so uh, finally finished consuming all of the copper in the in this mixture using the nitric acid I've decanted the copper nitrate and um, washed the excess nitric acid uh, out of this so next step is we're going to add some hydrochloric acid to this um, wouldn't need very much maybe like about as much water as is in there currently that much more hydrochloric acid we're going to heat that up to about uh, 70 75 degrees Celsius or so and then start uh, giving it a little bit of nitric acid again in small increments to dissolve the gold that's in there hey guys next morning for me here and I have the results of the um, 17 Pentium 2 slot processors here um, obviously not very much but I'm actually fairly happy with what I'm seeing here just from the point of view that it um, it literally came from 17 of those little black squares and usually when you're working with small numbers like that uh, it can be very difficult to actually get some visible gold out so actually that's uh, it's not very much but it's looking pretty good um, as a side matter of interest I noticed that um, board sort by these kind of boards so if you separate the heat sinks and stuff off them from, from these slot processors for about uh, $10 a pound so 22 US dollars a kilo is about 30 New Zealand dollars a kilo so we know that there is not going to be a, a ton of gold in there that's I think that's probably you know substantially less than they even pay for RAM so but you know let's uh, let's get it onto the lie detector and um, let's see what we've got so get that up and running bang okay. 
and I'll just add my little gold hoard for the year. I'm, I'm almost at an ounce on this, so it's not looking uh, it's not looking too bad for the year so far. It seems to be adding up a little bit quicker now that I'm actually uh, putting some time into it. So what we'll do is we'll just put this in there, and then we'll do some uh, some live maths. See what we've got. That's about as much as I'll get out of there. So 0 0.27 grams. That is uh, not terrible. So 0 0.27 from 17. Let's get it into here. So the P2 slot processor, 17 of them gave us 0 0.27 grams of gold. And if you want to see what that is on a per IC yield, it's just 0 0.27 divided by 17, which is uh, 0 0.0159. Zero 0.01. Let's make it 0 0.016 for my little losses in the system. And if we then wanted to work out um, gold in New Zealand's about $60 a kilo, so uh, 0 0.016 times. 60, yeah, roughly 96 cents per per one of those processors. So um, fairly low yield, and that's you know that's not fantastic, but that it is what it is. Now, if we also look at the trimmed fingers, because um, so I've got one here that I've pre-trimmed the fingers off nice and close. Let's have a quick look at that. I should have left this guy should have left this guy going okay so the fingers from one processor weigh 2.77 grams so trimmed finger weight 2.77 grams and uh, if we want to find out the uh, the gold content for that finger and I'm estimating about 3.5 gram per kilo that might be a little bit high might be a little bit low but that's probably close enough and um, we know that a thousand grams would give us 3.5 grams so 2.77 grams is going to give us x and then we just cross multiply so a thousand x is equal to 2.77 multiplied by 3.5 and that is a 9.695 695 and then we have to divide by a thousand to get X and that is going to be 0 0.0097 grams so the 2.77 grams of fingers will give us that much so it's uh, 0 0.0097 grams and the value of that once again at 60 New Zealand dollars 097 times 60 is about 58 cents so 0 0.58 and what that means is the value of a slot processor to me in gold is 0 0.96 plus oops, 0 0.96 plus 0 0.58 is about a dollar fifty, so one dollar fifty-four. So uh, not terrible, but I certainly uh, won't be paying for them as you know as high-end CPUs. I'll probably be paying for them uh, as um, slot card type pricing if I were to buy a substantial amount of them. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and um, yeah. See you next time.